Vance, y'all look into his eye. In, in, defense, in, defense, in defense of his wife, she didn't do it. He got into a fist fight with about a 12-pound sledgehammer. And all I can tell you is you ought to see the hammer. It won. Y'all are beautiful. Can I say I love you? Every one of you. I wasn't going to get nervous doing this, but you guys hold a special part in my life, my marriage. I am today where my wife wanted us to be 25 years ago. She grew up in church. I pulled her away. I didn't see the things of life that I see today just for the simple fact that I didn't grow up in it. She did. She knew the importance of having Christ in our life and knew the, the road of destruction that we were on. But it took us 20 plus years to get here. And you know, and you guys are responsible for just leading the way and showing. So I didn't have a very good opinion of uh, church. Um, I tried to go to church with her early on in our marriage. Um, and I'll be honest. Um, the pastor was part of the family and sometimes you know too much about people you know this thing's going to get hot and it, <laughs> it's going to get hot and they're going to hear all the whimpers and everything else but that's alright so I didn't have as you know good image of uh, religion as probably I should have but she knew that's where we needed to be and Throughout, I guess her love for me kept following along, um, and she had some mis she was misguided by by me. I took the place of of her Lord. Through that, we kept leading this life of sin um, that was just untold, unimaginable, to be honest with you. Um, we ain't got time to go into all that, I promise you. But we had things that just basically accumulated onto our life to where we, rose, we, we tried to raise our kids thinking that we were good people. But you know, it's hard to be good people when you live a life of sin. We don't know, we still don't know the definition of goodness. But we got to the point to where I had a 14-year-old daughter. Anybody had a 14-year-old daughter? <laughs> it's a good thing it's not like grade school where you have to do it again. I'd be in jail, but she wouldn't be here. <laughs> just telling you. <laughs> it's just... Uh, and we wouldn't go make it. And then throughout those, knowing that we had issues in our family, we had no direction. We had no guide. We were just kind of free in it. And, and basically that 14-year-old that I was having difficulties with was leading. She was on her own. We were on our path of de destruction. She was on her own which eventually led her to the point to where she didn't want to be here anymore. We had completely and utterly failed. In my, in my opinion, we had failed this life. And I'll never forget the day that all of this was revealed to us. 
God was everywhere. He was, my son, his first response was to take a Bible into the room to where they were having their conversation when it came to life that she didn't want to be here anymore. He was everywhere. The person that came to our house, uh, Tim S Scott, was the sheriff's department. He was a man of God. He was everywhere, pointing us into a direction that, guys, you, this ain't going well. That <laughs> you're not on the right path anymore. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm thankful that my wife had that relationship because most likely she was the one that was being brought back. She brought us with her. Many people of the world never get the opportunity for that. I'm going to borrow something from Nick here. Our reflection. Guys, what are you reflecting in this world? Do people see Jesus when they see you? Or do they see someone who needs Jesus? I mean, think about it. Everybody says, well, you need Jesus. Well, they can look anywhere in the world and find somebody who needs Jesus. Anywhere. The day we walked into this place, first person I ever seen was Chris Pope. He welcomed me with kindness. We didn't even know which church we were coming to the day we came here. But seriously, we knew we were going to church because we had so many problems in our life that we there was only one place to turn, and that was to the Lord. I didn't know that at the time. I'll be honest about it. I was just following along. We, we could have selected... I talked with my hands, sorry. We could have selected, we had picked out like four different churches. And one, I could have went back to my hometown, um, you know, even though I'd lived here since I was 18 years old. We really don't know that many people in Giles County. So my brother's church in uh, Summertown at the time, um, you know, we talked about that one, the little church there in Campbellsville, no particular denomination. You can find the Lord anywhere, right? Well, there was something about this little red church that we drove by every time that was appealing. And for some reason, I felt led to come here. So I, I remember the day telling her that I don't know where we're going or where we're going to end up, but this is I want to try this one first because I felt led to come here. And I promise you I love you all because of who you are and what came of that visit. We never went anywhere else. And I promise you, I haven't missed a service that I could be a part of since that day. Um, just for the simple fact that, I don't know, it's something in you people that shined on me, that made me want to be different. I hope you shine it. I hope you shine like this out in the world. I swear I do, because if you do, you can affect a lot of people. Because just the kindness and love that's brought into this place every Sunday is just unreal. And I hope I put a little bit of it back on my gratefulness to you, back on to you, because I wouldn't be here. Do I mess up? Yeah, I mess up. But I keep chasing after something that I know is real. And I know it's real because of you. So, you know, I'm not going to get into scriptures or anything, but 1 Corinthians 13, 8, the very first part of that scripture says, love never fails. Well, you guys didn't fail me when I walked in this door. Thank you. Um, I want to tell one little story here. <laughs> Probably shouldn't, but I'm going to anyway. This gentleman will not remember this. 
we had first, when we first came here, we'd been here a couple of months and um, really weren't involved with anything. We were just showing up for services, sitting real close to the back so we could, I'm close to the door. And uh, we had our first VBS here, and that was three VBSs ago. And came in once the Sunday after VBS had, had happened that week, and um, we went back to the kitchen, and uh, I can't remember. Somebody asked us to do something. We never we were never went into the kitchen, but somebody asked us. I guess we befer- became familiar enough for somebody to ask us to go do something. But anyway, I ran up to, I uh, came across a gentleman uh, at the sink, and uh, and. I missed you this week, brother, is what his first words he said. And well, I came up with my long excuse about, you know, we didn't have uh, children of age for VBS and really weren't involved and just, just stayed at home, you know, really didn't know how. His comment back to me was, it's easier that way. Staying home's easier. Will you raise your hand? <laughs> Ronnie Lee, Ronnie Lee was that man. I don't know if you know who you're dealing with or not, but I could have become offended by that. <laughs> Thank God that you people had already started working on my heart. And that God's message has come to you in many different ways. And that was a profound part of, of, of me getting involved with this church was that message that came from our Lord through a smart aleck answer from Ronnie Lee. <laughs> I promise you, I promise you, if you don't like people stepping on your toes, buy you some steel toes. But if you don't like God stepping on them, you might already get away from this book. Those messages will come to you, and I thank you, brother. I thank you for your heart that helped shape me and bring us to become who we're supposed to be. You're supposed to be involved. We're supposed to just get in there and get with it. I mean, showing up every time that the doors are open is not enough. You have to get involved with other things. And I know I'm probably pushing my time limit here. I'm going to finish with one other thing. One of, the cro- one of the best ministries that we have in this church that has shaped my life and my marriage has been Nick and Amanda's marriage retreat. Guys, it's an important mission that we have here. And their ministry to each and every one of us through our marriages is... It shapes people in a way that you'll you'll never know. Me and my wife, we loved each other. I know we did because we stayed with each other so long. But I'll be honest with you, we didn't like each other very well sometimes. <laughs> and um, hey, I still get happy anniversary a whole lot. And there's some of y'all that will know <laughs> exactly what that means. But uh, guys, if you cannot love your husband or love your wife, how in the world will you ever love everyone else the way you're called to love them? It's been huge, guys. And this whole church, uh, but particularly that bond that I have with those people who go um, on those uh, trips with us is unreal. What happens on the mountain stays on the mountain. and um, But it's been huge in my life. And I just want to say I love you and that you guys just keep doing what you're doing because it is shaping our life. Ronnie, the good news is he told me that um, after you made that comment to him, he really had to go home and think about that. God told he and his wife that, you know what, I didn't make you for the easy part. I made you to be involved. So you never know. Count your victories, every one of them. If you don't count your victories, all you'll ever be is a loser.